We're so glad you joined us today. Our aim here at Glendale is to share Jesus Christ and the three angels' message through God's word, through music, and through healthy living. Welcome to the word. Welcome to AYS. Glendale is happy to have you here with us this evening, and we're getting ready to get our praise on. Amen? All right, all right, all right. here we go. Ready? Give me all in my lamp, keep me burning. Give me all in my lamp, I pray, I pray. Give me all in my lamp, keep me burning. Keep me burning till the break of day. Mm, sing, Hosanna, sing.
about this little light of mine. Uh-huh. No. But you know what? If we gonna do humble me, <laughs> we gotta let her light shine first, right? Yeah. So we gotta let her little light shine first, right? Don't you guys agree? You gotta let her little light shine first. Amen. I agree. Yeah. Then we do the humbleness. Is that okay? It's all right. We gonna do your little. Is this the same one? Is this the same one? Is this the same one? Yes, I think so. All right. I believe so. You guys win. Let's just get to the song. (laughs) (laughs) This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Yeah, this little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine.
we're gonna stand up and we're gonna sing side by side. I remember that song. I know it's an old song. Do you remember that song? I know. I know you guys remember that song. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. <laughs> about, it's about, yeah, it, I remember it. So if we could stand and sing, I said, I know it ain't on the screen, and I'm so sorry. And it might be some books down there. Um, Antonio? No books. They said no books. Okay. So therefore, no books, COVID, no books. Okay, well, go by your memory. May the Lord bless you. Okay. May the Lord bless that. God bless your wonderful brain. Side by side we stand, awaiting God's command, worshiping. tonight yet this afternoon um, just to join us in praise and worship um, God is not done with us amen? amen so side by side I hope we all can just meet each other in heaven amen, amen. and sing songs together let's bow our heads dear Jesus here I am your daughter God I'm not worthy but yet Lord I'm coming before you in behalf of my brothers and sisters asking that first of all, you just forgive me of my sins, Lord. Amen. And then, Lord, I'm asking that you will come down right now. Let your Holy Spirit abide as my brother comes before your throne, Lord, and, and, and before your people to give a message from you to them that they need to hear, that I need to hear. Because we need to know what's going on. What's going on, Lord? Speak to us. Give us confidence. Give us courage to keep in this wicked world because this fight is not about us. It's about you and, and Satan going on, but we're in the midst of all this chaos. So we need strength, Lord. We need strength, we need hope. So we pray that the words that you are going to give your manservant tonight will give us peace of mind that you are coming back. You're coming back for us soon and very soon. We thank you so much for hearing this prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Again, we welcome you to AY. We haven't had one in a while. 
and I'm hoping that pretty soon this will be remedy. But right now, I'm a, we're gonna go ahead. We're gonna get started with this. Amen. 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 So I give to you my brother Rupert. Praise God from whom all oh, blessings flow. Amen. 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 Uh, once again, we want to thank God for another day of rest. And we thank God for the Sabbath. Amen. Amen. And we're glad that you're here tonight, this evening. And I, I, my wife always says, don't make promises about not that you're not going to be long and you're going to be long. <laughs> so I'm not going to make a promise tonight. Right. I'm not even going to make the promise. All right, all right, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. Uh oh, uh oh. Praise God. Well, tonight, just for a little while, I promise you, I'm not going to keep you long. I um, want you to be able to enjoy some of the sun before it sets so you can get outside and enjoy this warm weather that happens in Minnesota every so often. Um, <laughs> praise God for the warmth and praise God for you. Tonight, you know, there's a few statements I want to make. In fact, I'm going to read these few quotes, and I want to look at Luke chapter 7, Luke chapter 7. But these are some of my favorite quotes that I've read on prayer in the pen of inspiration that are so powerful. I got this little book years ago when I was at Oakwood and never lost it. It's entitled Gems of Thoughts from the Pen of Ellen White. And it's a collection of quotations to help all who seek to learn or to reach the Enoch experience. Now, you know Enoch. Um, he walked with God until he was not. Amen. Okay, okay, that was a good place to shout, but let me explain it in a minute. Um, let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. Father, thank you for your love. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Now, as we come together one more time to open up your word for insight, for understanding, so that we might live the life you intended for us to live and be the people you have in mind that will be ready when you come. So bless us tonight, we pray in Christ's name. Amen. 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 Now, it says here, I want to read a few quotes, and then I'm going to share with you just a text of scripture about living under authority and the premise of prayer and why God becomes, to a certain degree, obligated to hear our prayer when we pray. Um, listen to this one. It says, if we keep the Lord ever before us, allowing our hearts to go out in thanksgiving and praise to him, we shall have a continual freshness in our religious life. Now, that, that one right there, it, it, it shouts me because the if is basically a coordinating conjunction that suggests the possibility that it might not happen. If. If you show up on time, I'll do this. If you act this way, I'll do this. If is a word, a word of doubt. In other words, you may or you may not, but it says here again, if we would just keep the Lord before us. And, and Isaiah says, if you keep the Lord before you, if you keep your mind stayed on him, he'll keep you in perfect peace. Amen. So when I think about the promises of God and I meet those conditions, I think they unlock heaven's storehouse where the promise that God made become realized. So if I would keep the Lord ever before me, allowing my heart to go out in thanksgiving and praise to him, we will have a continual freshness in our religious life. Because see, everything, according to the law of thermodynamics, it either wear out, rust out, or burn out. Mm -hmm. Everything that oxygen touch, it causes an erosion because of oxidative stress and free radical damage. What I'm simply saying is that everything tends to break down under stress. And even as Christians, if we don't, in other words, replenish what we lose through life, we can become wore out, wore down, no freshness in our Christian experience. And you wonder how some people are constantly just on fire. Years have gone by and they're still doing God's will and still being faithful. I believe the key is as we keep the Lord before us, with thanksgiving and praise as she promised, I think there will be a religious freshness in our experience. She says, in fact, right here, our prayers will take the form of a conversation with God as we would talk with a friend. He will speak his mysteries to us personally. And often they will come to us 
a sweet, joyful sense of the presence of Jesus. And our hearts will burn within us as he draws nigh to commune with us as he did with Enoch. You see, one of the things that Enoch learned how to do is walk with God. And it's very simple tonight. The Bible says two cannot walk together unless they agree. Amen? Amen. So the Christian life is really all about walking with God and agreeing with God every step of the way. Not arguing with God, not counseling God, not trying to teach God or educate God, but it's simply walking with God. And as you walk with God, the Bible says the path of the just I'm going to close this a little again. Um, the path of the just shines more and more. So for a Christian then, all you have to do is take a step and God gives you light. And you take another step and God gives you more light. And you take another step and God gives you more light. The reason why he does it that way is because if he showed you the whole journey, as I said before, it will intimidate us. So what God does, he sheds enough light on our path so as we take those steps, he gives us just what we need when it says our daily bread. As Enoch walked with God, he simply agreed with God. He accepted God's will for his life. And as she points out, we would have that burning relationship with God because Enoch simply agreed with God and he walked with God. And the Bible says two cannot walk together unless they agree. So as I'm walking with God, I'm agreeing with God. Yes, God, you are right. Yes, God, you are right. Every circumstance, every experience that I find myself in, I'm agreeing with God. And that means I have to know the Bible. I have to know the word of God unswaveringly. In other words, it says here another statement. Un, un, unwearily persistent prayer. The persistent asking brings the petitioner into a more earnest attitude. See, the persistent in prayer is not trying to twist God's arm. It's bringing the petitioner into a more earnest attitude of God, I need you. Something happens to us. Prayer does not bring God down to us. It brings us up to God. It changes our attitude. And once we begin to walk with God like that, I am no longer dependent on life changing. I need to change. See, many times we want people around us to change. We want the variables and circumstances and stimuli to change. But we got to get to a point where I'm not dependent on stimuli that determine my internal barometer. If I'm allowing things around me to dictate my joy and my happiness, then yes, I am a victim and I'm not a victor. So I've got to realize today that I can't allow circumstances outside of me that I cannot control determine and decide on how much happiness I have. So as I walk with God, something internally begins to happen. It says, when with, with earnestness and intensity, we breathe a prayer in the name of Christ, there is in that very intensity a pledge from God that he is about to answer our prayer, exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think. And I love this one right here. Nothing is apparently more helpless yet really more invincible than the soul that feels its nothingness and relies wholly on the merits of the Savior. By prayer, by prayer, by the study of his word, by faith in his abiding presence, the weakest of human beings may live in contact with the living Christ, and he will hold them by the hand that will never, ever let them go. Saints of God, that's the privilege that we receive when we begin to live under God's authority. That's what happens. And there's a byproduct of living under God's authority. In other words, when we begin to realign our lives and begin to walk according to the word of God, something happens to the life of the believer. In fact, it says here, another quote, it is part of God's plan. It is a part of God's plan to grant us an answer to the prayers of faith, that which he would not bestow, did not we thus ask. See, see one thing about God, he's not going to impose on you, he's not going to rape you, he's not going to give you what you really don't want. I believe that if God gave us supernatural power to overcome some stuff that we still want to pray about, then we will be mad about God. Not you all here, but you know there are some people, some places, who really don't want victory, they just want to keep praying about it. In fact, I see them sometimes praying, Lord, give me victory over this thing, Lord, help me overcome this thing, and Jesus 
shows up, taps them on the shoulder, and they say, please don't touch me right now, Jesus. I'm praying about it. I really don't want the power right now. I just want to go through the motions because, see, as I'm sympathizing with myself, going through my pity party, I really just want people to feel sorry about this. I want them to sympathize with me and give me a break. I don't want victorious power over sin and self and Satan. And therefore, we've got to understand what authority looks like. And notice, notice what it says here. Enoch avoided constant association with the ungodly and he spent much time in solitude, giving himself to meditation and prayer. To him, prayer was as the breath of the soul. He lived in the very atmosphere of heaven. Wow. Man, I need that right there. See, you're going you to have crisis around you, but you're going to need heaven around you. It says, whatever, and I love these quotes, whatever your anxieties and trials, spread your case before the Lord. Your spirit will be braced for endurance. The way will be open for you to disentangle yourself from embarrassment and difficulty. The weaker and more helpless you know yourself to be, the stronger you will become in his strength. Oh, I love that. That's all prayer is. Prayer is becoming vulnerable to the awesome God and recognizing without him, I can't make it. In fact, it says here, Testimonies, Volume 1. Do not neglect secret prayer, for it is the soul of the religion. With earnest, fervent prayer, plead for the purity of soul. Plead as earnestly, as eagerly as you would for your mortal life. Where is at stake? Where is at stake? Remain before God until unutterable longings are begotten within you and salvation and the sweet evidence is obtained of pardon of sin. See, we have the benefit of experiencing all the promises and the blessings that I'm just reading to you right now. They're there for the asking. Listen, listen again. This ought to wet your, this ought to wet your appetite to want to live under God's authority. I don't know about you, but I want this pervasive experience of the atmosphere of heaven with me. Wherever I go, I want Jesus to show up. It says, when these persons, now watch this. Listen to this one. I love this one right here. There are many souls who wrestle for special victories. And special blessings that they may do some great things. To this end, they are always feeling that they must make agonizing struggle in prayer and tears. When these persons search the scriptures with prayer to know the express will of God. And then do his will from the heart without one reservation or self-indulgence, they will find rest. Lord, have mercy. In other words, tonight, the conflict, the incongruency is mostly in our own hearts about whether or not we want to do the will of God. I believe that tonight. I believe the power is available. I believe the hardest thing about being a Christian is making up your mind that you want to be one. You see, we want to be in the river, on the bank, sometimes saved and sometimes lost. I don't want to go to hell. I just want to see how close I can get and feel the fire. I don't really want to go there. No, no, no. But I act like I do from time to time. In other words, God wants us to cash in on all the benefits of what it means to be a child of God. God. There is a perfect peace. In other words, there's peace on a past understanding. In other words, ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you this. Let's say, for instance, this pulpit represents understanding. And most people live their life and they get to this point right here and they just stop. But as a Christian, if this is understanding and you have peace, your peace ought to pass understanding. Okay, I'm going to go real slow because you missed it. Okay. Most of the stuff we can understand, we all right with. Most of the stuff, stuff we can understand, we accept. But when you get the peace of God, your peace pass understanding to a point where people are confused. How can you still bless God and you just lost your job? How can you bless God and you just got this announcement that your health is in trouble? How can you still raise your hand up and praise the God of the universe and you just lost a child or went through a serious crisis? You know why? Because your peace past understand it. I can't explain it. I can't define it. I can't write a paper on it. All I know in the midst of the storms of life, like the disciples in that boat, I know Jesus is on board and I know eventually when he gets up, when he wants to whenever he decides he gonna say peace be still and the storms in my life will cease and the lightning will stop flashing and the thunder will stop sounding 
All because he is under authority. See, Jesus lived under authority. And because he was under authority, he had power to do the will of God. And I declare, as children of God, we need that same power. It says here, another statement, you need not go to the ends of the earth for wisdom, for God is near. It is not the capabilities you now possess or ever will have that will give you success. It is that which the Lord can do for you. We need to have far less confidence in what man can do and far more confidence in what God can do for every believing soul. That's all saints. That's it. That's it. Prayer and belief. Notice here, as I read this text, it prepared not to leave you yet, but just for one moment. It says in, in Luke chapter 7, Luke chapter 7, Luke chapter 7, this is a story you're familiar with. It says, now when he concluded all his sayings in the hearing of the people, he entered Capernaum and a certain centurion servant who was, de who was dear to him, his servant was dear to him who was sick. And ready to die. So when he heard about Jesus. Now you know a centurion. He, um, a centurion is one who had, they say 6,000. But actually he was all under a satiria. And a satiria was under a smaller group. And a centurion 6,000 was actually breaking down to about 6 which is 1,000. So he was actually over about 60 men under that 1,000. Under that 6,000. Okay, so when you say a centurion, they, they had 6,000 soldiers. They were a cohort. But if you were a centurion, you were over about 60 who were under the 1,000. So you break it down like that. So he had about 60 men who answered to him. And they also answered to Caesar. And because of Caesar having authority over everybody, he's talking to Jesus now. Now listen to what he says to Jesus. And he says this. So when he heard about Jesus, he sent elders of the Jews to him. Now he sent an embassy or he sent somebody. He didn't go himself. See, sometimes we read and we think he's talking to Jesus. He's not talking. He sends somebody. He hears about Jesus. So he sends somebody to go and talk to Jesus. So he sent the elders of the Jews to him, pleading with him to come and heal his servant. And when they came to Jesus on his behalf, they begged, they begged him earnestly saying that the one for whom he should do this was deserving. And they said, this brother has done a lot for us. He loves our nation. He built our synagogue. Then Jesus went with him. So this centurion, this man was instrumental in probably helping the community. He wasn't a bad guy, even though he worked for Rome. He, I mean, he was not all of that. He, was, he had a good heart. And there are a lot of people who have a good heart who hear about Jesus. And all they want to do is talk about him and get to know him. And so they say he loves our nation. He's built our synagogue. Then Jesus went with them. Now they come and they get Jesus and they're on their way. Remember the elders came and got him. They put a word in on him and they said, let's go. And the man says, okay. And then Jesus went, the Bible says, for he loves our nation. Verse six, then Jesus went with them. And when he was, and notice when he was already not far from the house, the centurion sent his friends to him saying to him, Lord, do not trouble yourself. I am not worthy for you should enter under my roof. In other words, he says, no, hold up, bro. You ain't got to come in the house. I appreciate you coming this far, but I feel like I'm a little disrespectful to even ask you to come here. But, but, but I want you to stop where you are and notice the text. I am not worthy, verse 7. Therefore, I do not even think myself worthy to come to you, but say the word and my servant will be healed. That's, that's what he said right there. Or he says, I'm not worthy. I don't deserve your blessing. And all of us can say that tonight. I don't deserve your blessing, God. I don't deserve it, but I'm going to ask anyhow. <laughs> I know I've been pretty bad. I'm raunchy. I'm no good. I'm born in sin and shaping in, shape in iniquity. I was created like David said, thy word. He said, I was born in sin. Have mercy on me. He just pleaded his case. I'm undone. I'm unfinished. But then he says, therefore... He said, I did not even think myself worthy to come to you, but just say the word and my servant will be healed. And then he goes on to explain, verse 8, for I also am a man under authority, having soldiers under me. 
So I know what authority looked like. Go, and he goes. And another come, and he comes. And to my servant do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard this thing, he marveled. I mean, saints, when's the last time you marveled Jesus? <laughs> he said he marveled. He's like, he's scratching his head. Jesus said, wow. A centurion got it. He says, Jesus heard these things. He marveled at him and turned around and said to the crowd that follow him, I say to you, I have not found such great faith, not even in the church. Whoa. He says, Israel, that's what he said. That's his commentary. He said, I ain't seen this kind of faith anywhere, not even in the church, among the believers. And those who were sent, he says, returning to the house, found the servant well who had been sick. In other words, he says, he said, I remember reading something that said, a transvestite down on Burbank Street, living his or her life the way they're doing it, outside the will of God, will be better off in the judgment than saints who sit in the pews with an unrepentant heart and hear the truth and does nothing about it. Wow. Wow. So when we talk about faith, we're talking about the degree of guilt. How much you know about God and still can't trust God. Come on now. How much God has done for you and we still can't trust God. And then we wonder why I'm living the life I'm living in proportion to my willingness to obey and study and walk in the light that's already been revealed. And there are mysteries God is waiting. But in the text, he says, I say to them, he turned to the crowd. He said, y'all, I ain't never seen this kind of faith. This is the kind of faith I'm talking about. And what kind of faith is that? A faith that understands authority that God can do what he said he's going to do because of who he's under. He's under his father. And it was his father that gave him power to do what he's going to do. In fact, the reason why they had so much trouble is found in John chapter 5. Now, here's a glorified Bible study. Let me just take you there. The Bible says, here little, there a little, line upon line, precept upon precept. If they speak not according to this word, it's because there's no light in them. Check this out in John chapter 5. If you look at the context, Jesus had just healed a man at the pool of Bethesda. He healed him on the Sabbath, and the Pharisees are deciding to get up in his grill. They're upset and they're mad, not only because he healed the man on the Sabbath and told him to pick up his bed, but they're even mad now because he said he was a son of God. If you don't believe me, let's look at it just a little bit. Notice, notice what it says here. If you read John chapter 5, that's your homework tonight, or that's your church work tonight. I need you to read John chapter 5. I'm going to drop down to verse 16. In fact, where he says, for this reason, the Jews persecuted Jesus and sought to kill him because he had done these things on the Sabbath. But Jesus answered them, my father has been working until now, and I've been working. Therefore, the, now, now watch this, watch this. <laughs> now, it's one thing somebody want to kill you. The Bible says they now want to kill him more than, more to kill him. <laughs> okay, okay, y'all missed that, y'all missed that. Oh, okay, let me read it again. Verse 16, for this reason, the Jews persecuted Jesus. And by the way, y'all, these church folk, and they wanted to kill him because he had done these things on the Sabbath. But Jesus answered, my father has been working until now, and I have been working. Verse 18, therefore the Jews sought all the more to kill him because he not only broke the Sabbath, but also said that God was his father, making himself equal with God. See, see their problem is they don't understand Jesus' position and authority. And the problem with humanity today is when you don't understand Jesus, you'll never understand how to get out of your mess. I don't have time, saints, to just explore this. But if you go back to Revelation 12, the war in heaven was Michael and the ark. And it was Jesus. In the story of redemption, God had to call a special meeting to declare to the whole unfallen realms Jesus is God and he's my son. And how you treat him will determine your existence. He had that meeting in heaven. And now on earth when Jesus says there's no other name given among men whereby I must be saved. He's telling the truth. There is no other way to life 
other than Jesus, I've come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. And if you don't understand Jesus, you're missing out on understanding how to have authority to rule in your own life. Watch this, saints. This thing is so sweet when you understand it. Line upon line. Notice verse 19. Then Jesus answered and said to them, Most assuredly, I say to you, the Son can do nothing of himself. But what he sees the Father do. For whatever he does, the Son also does in like manner. Oh, that's a word right there, y'all. In other words, Jesus is giving us a hint to his power. He says, I don't do anything on my own. What I do, I watch to see what my daddy is doing. And then I join him. You miss it. You miss it. Okay, let me say it again. Let me say it like this. I stop praying, God bless me. Lord, help me to do what you're blessing. See, see, our prayers are too puny. Our prayers are too small. We want to be blessed. Why? If God gets you out of debt, who you going to help? If God bless you with another car, who you going to let in? Who you going to take to church? If God gives you a bigger house, what ministry are you going to open up? If God does all of this for you, who's going to be blessed? But if you stop worrying about your situation and start joining God and what he's doing, your life will be blessed to the point where it'll be overflowing when you Give yourself to ministry. Jesus said, this is what I do. I watch to see what my daddy's doing and I just join him. How do you do it, Jesus? I stay up all night and I pray for insight and wisdom so that tomorrow when Jesus shows up at the well, at the well, or shows up at the pool, at the pool, he didn't do it by accident. His daddy told him, I'm going to be doing some ministry on Fifth Avenue. Just show up and I'll use you. That's what he's saying. He prayed to know what God's will was and he would show up and be the dispenser of the blessing. I'm not in Minnesota right now by accident. God gave me an unction when I got an invitation to come. But when you follow the will of God, God flows to you and you bless somebody else. It's not about your life. I must decrease so he can increase. Oh, yeah, I'm sometimes inconvenient, but I'd rather be inconvenienced for the almighty because he hung on the cross and I inconvenienced his existence. That's the least I can do. Notice the text says, I'm getting happy, y'all. Oh, man, I said I wasn't going to be long. I, I, I remember I didn't promise anything. I didn't start off with no promise. I promise I didn't promise. Amen. And then he answered him. Watch this. Most assuredly, but when he sees the father, for the father loves the son and shows him, shows him what? All things. Ladies and gentlemen, Jesus declared that what he got, we will be able to have. Is God showing you something? Come on now. I mean, I mean, really, I'm looking at this saying this is the recipe. In fact, in his book, the, the brother um, Encountering God, he talks about how through these steps we can encounter God. He says Jesus is an example of what happens. He says, what the fa he says the father loves the son. See, for the father loves the son. He got over that hump of his own insecurity, doubting God's love for his life. And the problem with a lot of people is they're still doubting God's love for their life. Wow. See, you, you, the confidence comes when you know God loves you. My daddy loves me. And I can't do enough to turn him on. And I can't do bad enough to turn him off. <laughs> See, in other words, you can't do good enough to make him love you more. And you can't do bad enough to make him stop loving you already. God is love. And his love is not predicated on the object that he loves. Because if the object determines his love, then it ain't love. His love has to be unconditional. And God's love has no strings attached. It is self-renouncing love. It is a love that forgets itself. It is a love that's self-sacrificing love. That's the kind of love that changes the lives of people. And when we look at God and become an appreciation of his character, it draws you to him because love begets love. That's why he loved us so much. Well, the father loves the son. He's, he's almost talking third person. He's not even talking about himself. He didn't say father loves me. He said the father loves the son. And he's talking to the Pharisees. Now, watch this whole dialogue, y'all. We got a little time. Notice what he says. 
The father loves his son, and he shows him all things that he himself does. And he will show him greater works than these that you may marvel. In other words, you just get, God is just getting beginning. He's just getting started the stuff he's going to blow your mind about. For as the father raised the dead and gives life to them, even so the son gives life to whom he will. In other words, he said, I got prerogative because I'm under authority to give life to whoever I want to give it to. That's a principle. So God has power to give me life through Jesus. And Jesus said, I'm the dispenser that has authority to give life. That's why when you give your life to God, you can't not miss heaven. You cannot, for a Christian, hell, is, is, it, I mean, for, for a Christian, sleep, for, for a Christian, death is a sleep. That's right, that's right. It's a quick nap. You cannot die because in Christ, that would be double jeopardy. When punishment and judgment fell on Jesus, it can't fall on anybody that's in him. That's why the Christian has assurance. That's why the Christian has a future. I cannot be judged. Why? Because I'm in Christ and there's no double jeopardy. You can't crucify him again. That's why Moses had not. Moses couldn't go into the promised land because he, he didn't speak to the rock. He hit the rock and he struck it twice. And that means Christ would be crucified twice. And you cannot bring judgment on something twice. That's why if you're in Christ, you're a new creation and all things are passed away. You cannot die now. You take a nap as a Christian. And Jesus knew this. And he's living with this confidence because he's talking. Notice, saints. Notice what you, oh man, this thing is packed. It, notice he says, for as a, no, verse, verse 22, for the father judged no one, but has committed all judgment to the son, that all should honor the son. Hmm. See, see, if you ain't honoring the son, you can't make it. Come on now. Muhammad, Allah, Buddha, all that stuff is fine. Yeah, I see boys with bow ties on the street. Yeah, they got upward mobility. Yeah, they selling magazines. Yeah, they selling pies. They doing good. That's just temporal. That ain't going to get you to heaven. You got to have some Jesus if you want to go to glory. I mean, I, I praise God for the work they're doing to take young men out of jails and prison. And that's the work we should be doing, too. Amen. Not leaving the other undone. Yeah, it's some unleft work for us, too. It's some stuff that we ain't doing that we need to start doing. And, yeah, we got to get busy doing it. But the truth of the matter is, without Jesus, there's no salvation. And the text says this, that all should honor the Son, that they should honor the Father. He who does not honor the son does not honor the father who sent him. He's talking to church folk. He's talking to, and watch this. Most assuredly I say to you, he who hears my words and believes in him who sent me has everlasting life and shall not come into judgment. I just told you that. You believe me, you won't be judged. There's no judgment for you if you believe me. I mean, that's, man, you can't tell me that changed your whole perspective on living now. I'm no longer under condemnation. I no longer have to live under the load of guilt of stuff I've done in the past. I'm free from it. And notice, notice, and you shall not come into judgment, but pass from death to life. Most assuredly, I say to you, the hour is coming. The hour is coming. That, that's, now, this is a problem that I have. When, 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 if, they gonna, if you're going to lie to me about one thing, you'll lie my, you might lie about some other stuff. So if you're telling me some dead folk in heaven, you're lying. Mm -hmm. Come on now. And I don't care what church, what religion telling you that. You're you lying to say that mama is in heaven or daddy's in heaven. Because my Bible says, most assuredly, I say to you, the hour is coming and now is when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God and those who hear will live. Come on now. That's in the New Testament. That's what he says. Marvel not. The day will come. And then he says this. For as the father has life in himself, so he has granted the son to have life in himself and has given him authority. I like that. I told you. He has given Jesus authority to execute judgment also because he is the son of man. Do not marvel at this for the hour is coming in which all who are in the grave will hear his voice. All in the grave. Everybody in the grave. Why? Because he has power to execute, to give life. Mm. 
Now, now, saints, this is what I'm thinking. <laughs> if I don't go down, if I go down to my grave without knowing him, who wakes me up? And when I wake up, who do I got to answer to? Come on now. I mean, have you ever thought about that in your life? Uh, I mean, you go down, you know the conditions of eternal life, and you don't follow them. You go down in your grave and die. Now, whoever has the rules can determine whether you should get up. You hear what I'm saying? <laughs> Whoever, may, I don't know. I mean, I'd rather live as though there is a God and find out later there isn't than to live as though there isn't a God and find out later there is. Because yes. yes. you can't undo that stuff, y'all. You hear what I'm saying? You can't undo it. Once you, it's done. So notice what he says here. For as the Father has given him authority and execution, and he says, don't marvel at this, for the hour is coming. It will. And notice verse 29. Here it is. There's a separation. There's a separation. How does the separation take place? That's the reason why I'm confused with people who say Jesus was about love and you can live any way you want to live. Literally, I can be what I want to be. Even though God made me male, I can turn female and live a life that I want to live outside his will and say the director had my play, my act in the play wrong. I mean, I'm a, let's say I'm a character. And he tells me, when the curtains open, you're supposed to be male. But then I run to the bathroom and do something something else and come back on the stage female. And the, was the director wrong? Wow. There's a reason why you black. There's a reason why you male. There's a reason why you female. There's a reason why you are what you are. Let me tell you something. Out of your purpose creates, see, see, your function. Your function determines your purpose and your purpose determines your design. You're not even who you are by accident because God had a purpose for you. Therefore, your purpose creates your form. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So to carry out your purpose, you had to be male or female or black. Don't apologize for what the creator had in mind for you to show up in history or his story. <laughs> his story. This is his story. But praise God, he gives us a moment. He gives us a blink in his story. We can make a, 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 a cameo in his story. That's right. I'm not here for long, but when the curtains open, I ought to perform. And when the curtain closed, I ought to bow. Thank you, Jesus. I'll see y'all on the other side. See, that's all life is about maximizing what God created you for and fulfilling that purpose in time so that when time stops you can say praise God I've kept the faith, I've ran the course I didn't give up, I didn't throw in the towel, I did what you asked me to do and he said well done you good and faithful servant Amen. and that's what Jesus is doing Saints, I'm telling you in this story here it blows my mind, watch what he says, watch what he says because I'm talking about this authority that he's under I'm talking about this authority. Notice what he says. Do not marvel at this, for the hour is coming, and come forth. Verse 29. Those who have done good, those who have done good to the resurrection of life. Ladies and gentlemen, if, if, in other words, there is something God expects for us to do in order to meet this separation. Amen. Those who have done good to the resurrection of life, and those who have done evil to the resurrection of damnation or condemnation. He says, I can of myself do nothing. As I hear, I judge, and my judgment is righteous because I do not. Now, now there's a sermon I preach entitled Living in the Flow, and this point right here is so true. He says, I do not seek my own will, but the will of the Father who sent me. Amen. Uh, it's not about me. <laughs> See, in other words, it's not about my agenda. I'm not going to play tug of war in the church about the mission God has given us. <laughs> if you want to play titly winks and footsies for political maneuvering about your position, and if you still want to fight over this and that, go ahead. I'm just going to seek to do the will of God while you sit there trying to maintain your power. Because the text says it. I do not seek my own will. It's not about me. It's not about you. It's not about us. It's about fulfilling the mission of our daddy who said, get the work done. Amen. Amen. 
You got folk going to Christ's graves and you worried about the color of the carpet. You got folk who don't know Jesus and you mad because you don't like the gospel singing. You mad because they got drums and you mad because they, oh Lord, you mad about stuff that's not a priority in the heart of God. What folk wearing? And look at the young folk. Look how they dress. So what? If they get some Jesus in them, I promise you, their life will change. They'll start loving God. And they'll start serving God. And yes, the dress may come down. But your nasty attitude might stay the same. Judgmental. I mean, I, I mean, y'all, y'all help me, Holy Ghost. I'm trying. I'm trying to get finished this thing. I'm trying, but, but I'm just reading the Bible. I can do nothing. Jesus said, it "Ain't about me." And notice, saints, the next few verses will blow your mind. He says, "If I bear witness of myself, my witness is not true. If I'm just blowing whistles and I'm just blowing smoke, talking about who I am, then, then, then don't believe it. There is another who bears witness of me, and I know that the witness which he witnessed of me is true." You have sent, notice, you have sent to John, and he has borne witness of the truth. John talked about me. Yet I do not receive testimony from man, but I say these things that you may be saved. I got to tell you the truth. I'm the way. Y'all mad at me because I healed the man. You mad at me because I said, no. but I got to tell you, I'm the way. I'm the door. He said, you want to be saved? Listen, he was the burning and shining lamp, 35. And you were willing for a time to rejoice in his light. But I have a greater witness than John's. For the work which the Father has given me to finish, the very works that I do bear witness of me that the Father has sent me. Mm-hmm. And notice what he says here. Now watch this. And the Father himself who sent me has testified of me. And man, this right here is a whop in the head to church folk. See, if I told people like this, if I said this right here to church folk, they'd be mad at me. But I'm so glad I can say it with the Bible. Because right here, this is what Jesus says. You have neither heard his voice at any time, nor seen his form. But you do not have his word abiding in you, because whom he sent. Him you do not believe. That's how I know you ain't got the word in you. I just smoked you out. I just showed the litmus test. And that is how you feel about me. Yeah, you got church attendance under your belt. Yes, you keep the Sabbath. Yes, you got a vegetarian and vegan diet. Yes, you don't eat meat, but you eat people. Yes, I got you. I'm understanding you, but you ain't got Jesus. Come on now, break it down. Amen. And without Jesus, you have absolutely nothing. Empty. Jesus says you like, you like whited sepulchers with dead men bones. And notice what he says. Notice what he says, saints. This is what he says. But you do not have his word abiding in you. How do I know? Because you ain't believing on the one my father sent. And then he says this. Now, verse 39 and 40, never use this as a proof text for Bible studies. And I hear it all the time. Quote it out of context. This is a rebuke as you see it to the Pharisees. This is what he says to them in the next verse. Y'all problem is you search the scriptures. For in them you think you got eternal life. And these are they that testify about me. But you are not willing to come to me that you might have this life. Come on. Ah. Wow. You cross T's. You study all night. You know there's some people. You know they study. Have Bible study all night. They study all. They study. study never come into a knowledge of truth. But always studying. Always throwing a Bible. A book in your face. But they. Not, not, not in this church. There's another church. They just got. They're obstinate. They're difficult to get along with. They know the Bible. But they don't know Jesus. And notice he says. I do not receive honor from men. But I know you. That you do not have the love of God in you. It's on the church folk. You think things have changed? You, you think things have changed? You think there's not no undercover people in the church who have a form of godliness and denying the power thereof? You, you think things have changed? You think, you think personalities change, but the same spirit that's pervasive throughout time 
demonic activity is still real. And you got people who camouflage themselves under the name of Christianity and religion and do all manner of evil, just like they did with the Bible during slavery, Jim Crow, segregation and lynching. They use the Bible. And the same thing today, people use the Bible. And then we cause, and because they want to throw out the baby in the bathwater, there are some good Christians who believe the Bible and that we should live with the Bible. And they are mad at you because you have a stand about what God says about male and female relationships and because you're not going on with the agenda you hate them I don't hate them I hate what they do I don't like what adulterers do I don't like what fornicators do I don't like what people do with drugs I don't like any of sin any deviation from God's perspective I don't like when it deviate from thus saith the Lord, now you got an issue with me, just like you want me to get over the issue with you and your lifestyle. Can you get over the issue of me wanting to serve God? See, it goes both ways. If you want me to respect your opinion about letting some diversion and perversion in your life, and I can say I don't like it, can you give me that same opportunity to go with my perversion? Because I know my perversion is going to be right. I know when it's all said and done in the smoke clear, God will have the last word. I know when it's all said and done, everything is going to be leveled, and every knee will bow, and every tongue will confess that Jesus was right. As I close, saints of God, it says authority. You see, one thing about authority, if you live under it, you get the benefits of being able to cash in on the power. Let me, let me say that again. When you live under proper authority, according to the Bible, don't you know, even in the Old Testament, in Jeremiah, I don't want to go there because it'll, it'll, it'll send me preaching another word. <laughs> you know, God raised up Nebuchadnezzar and said, I give him authority and call him his servant. A heathen king. God can raise up whoever he wants and give authority to it. Trials sometimes. He gives authority to come into your life. Situations, he gives it authority. Storms, he gives it authority. But when it runs its route, then it goes to a course where God says, enough is enough. You learn your lesson. And he turns it off. But in the Old Testament, in the very first book of the Bible, in fact, Genesis chapter 1, if you really want to understand authority and the benefits of it, it's right there. Where it says in Genesis chapter 1, and I'm going to read it in the New King James. It says, verse 126, then God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Let, us have do let, let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds, and over all of that. God gave them, verse 26, 27, God created man in his own image. And the image created male and male and female. God blessed them. And God said, it have dominion over the fish of the sea and over every living thing that moves. And the God said, I have given you every herb. In other words, I'm giving you authority. Amen. That's what God did. He gave it to man. <laughs> the lion would come up to the man and man would rub the lion. But after sin, now we run from lions. You know that? <laughs> we lost the authority. That's what happened. But you know, in Genesis chapter 1, if you go back a few verses to verse 16, then God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. Did you see that? You read that? Okay, can I read that again? No, what is it say? Then God made two great lights. In the King James Version, it says, what, what does it say? You, anybody got the King James? What, what does yours say? And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. Okay, okay, that, that's it, that's it. In other words, you know what the great light is, the sun. And then he made the, the, the lesser light to rule the night. Mm -hmm. Now, the lesser light can rule the night because it understands its relationship with the greater light. Mm -hmm. You know the lesser light is the moon. Mm -hmm. And what the moon recognizes, I don't have a luminary propensities in myself. So what I need to do is line up with the sun. 
And under the authority of the sun, when it reflects off me, I'm able to rule my night. Ha! Oh, you missed that. You missed that. You're... Okay, let me say that again. Let me say that again. In other words, I get up early in the morning. I fall on my knees and prostrate myself before the almighty, almighty God. And I position myself so that the sun can begin to emanate, illuminate me so that I begin to reflect the sun. In fact, I will become so lit like John the Baptist. I got to remind people I'm not the light. Ha! I, I know I might look like the light. I know I might sound like the light, but I'm not the light. I'm not worthy to untie his shoes. I'm not the light. You might sing like the light. You might praise God like the light, but you got to remind people I'm not the light I'm just reflecting the light and when the light reflects off you you ought to be able to rule your darkness you ought to have authority to rule your habits and your addiction and your problems and your issues wait maybe 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 I'm not lined up with the light that's why I'm not ruling stuff in my life maybe I'm not living under proper authority Maybe, maybe I have to realign myself under God's authority that comes when I know Jesus for myself. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, man, this thing is sweet. I can go on and on and on and on. I don't have any sermons, but I'm going to stop because I don't want to wear out the patience of the saints. And I don't want somebody to say, what is this thou doest to the people? Like Moses father-in-law told him and he just said what is this thou doest to the people you're gonna wear yourself out and them so i don't want to be guilty of that so may god bless you may god keep you and properly align yourself under god's authority and i promise you he will dispense power because in acts chapter one he says after the holy ghost comes you'll receive power to what witness witness and guess what happens as a byproduct of me being in your life according to the old testament when they took the ark and brought it into the room where dagog was mm. mm -hmm. dagog was on his face yes. <laughs> and, and it happened a couple of times mm -hmm. why because it was in the presence of god That's right. idols cannot coexist in the presence of god and finally, when they came back in the last time, his arms were cut off, his head was cut off, his leg was cut off. Because you can't let idols coexist in the same place where God is. That's why he says, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If you let me come in, I'll come in and sup with you. And I'll be in your house so that the next time the devil knocks at the door. And by the way, let me tell you what I do. When the devil knocks on my door, I don't answer it. I go put my feet up and say, Jesus. I don't mean to be disrespectful, but it sounds like somebody at the door. In fact, it sounds like a devil knock. Because the last time I got close to, y'all know how y'all do when folk come and knock at the door and you got the chain lock on and you open it up halfway. No, you know it's the devil. Stop playing. Leave that door closed and get away from the curtains. You know how the curtains be moving when folk act like they ain't there. The devil know you in there, so get away from the door and ask Jesus to go open up the door. And one thing about Jesus, he ain't cracking the door. He ain't peeking through the peek hole. He gonna open the door wide open. And the devil say, oh, my bad. I got the wrong address. My bad. Gee, peace, Jesus. Because he remember all those beat downs. There was war in heaven and he got slammed. In the wilderness, he got slammed. And he knows that Jesus doesn't play. And he knows that when he comes back as king of kings and lord of lords, he gonna get slammed one more time so he don't like me with Jesus. In fact, on another occasion when Jesus was healing somebody, they said, have you come to torment us before the time? So even the devils know that there's judgment to come. And ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, let me remind you, hell was never meant for us. Isaiah 5, 13, 14 says, hell is enlarging herself because people are making reservation to God. Have mercy. It was never a place for you. Hmm. Revelation 20 says, it's for the devil and his demons. Mm -hmm. And I tell people all the time, I can't wait <laughs> to go to the devil's funeral. Mm. I'm going to show up early. <laughs> you, know how you, you know how you come back to the casket and you look at and the Bible says, you're going to have victory over death. I'm going to be like death. Well, what up now, death? <laughs> I don't know about you, but I got to be there, y'all. May the Lord bless us. Father God, thank you for your awesome word. Thank you for reminding us that we have authority. If we live under your authority, 
We can rule our darkness, our habits. Lord, we should not be victimized by stuff you gave us power to overcome. It's amazing how a little two-inch thing called tobacco can rule somebody's life. It's amazing how we can take crack cocaine and, and eat it, sniff it, drink it, smell it, and let it control our lives. Lord, it's a shame that we let grapes that's fermented, put it in bottles, and kill innocent babies and children. Lord, it's a shame that we can't get ourselves together and behind a gun, five pounds on your trigger finger, and take a life that you cannot replace. Lord, help us. Help us, we pray. And save us, Jesus, we ask. In your name, amen. 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 Good Lord bless y'all. It's a shame that good things got to come to an end. I know you all been blessed. I've been blessed. Been blessed. Been blessed. I cried. Cried a lot. Shame on you. No. Um, but now, like I said, every tears good thing. Yeah, tears of rejoicing. Uh, but God is good. God is good. And. Um, you know, just we're gonna keep our, our church in prayer. Keep our church in prayer, um, and it's, it's encouraging. It's encouraging, and I know I've been encouraged. How about, how about you? You've been encouraged yeah, that know that Jesus is on the throne, yes. that Jesus yeah. do hear us, and and that yes. that our prayers are lifted up yes. to heaven. Yes. Amen. And I just want to thank Levon. Um, we've been at this for ten years, praying yes. on the prayer line. Yes. Yes. Um, Amen. Some, you know, sometimes um, we get on there and we just cry our hearts out um, and because sometimes it just gets so deep. It gets so deep and, and we just thank God for just being there for us and seeing the miracles happen. We've seen people being healed. Yeah. We've seen people getting things overcome yeah. and we just cry. We just cry because God is good. He yeah. does hear us um, and people don't realize that we pray in their behalf. Yeah. People, prayer is it's powerful. Amen. It's powerful. And, and just because the 40 weeks of prayer has ended, but our prayers don't need to end. It doesn't need to end. And I just want to thank my brother Rupert for coming. Amen. I appreciate Amen. him for coming. Amen. Appreciate him. Um, so now as um, we close, um, I was expecting more young people because there was, I know some um, wasn't feeling well. And they had a lot of questions. Um, people don't know, even though we're praying, for our young people. Keep praying for them. Yeah. You know, we have our young people that want to commit suicide. People don't realize that. This is craziness going on out there. Right. It's really crazy. Our young people are struggling. Yeah. Um, and and they going off and asking for other things like drugs and they see the, the glamour, you know, because of the pandemic. They in in the house and they see things and they out there and, and they people are offering other things. We need to offer them better. We need to offer them better choices. So um, I'm just praying for wisdom, and I've been praying for God to lead me as um, I want to lead, continue to lead the, lead the young people, the youth, because that's my love. Yeah. And um, the young people are always with me all the time, every weekend, young adults. Yeah. Um, so I want to take it to another level. Um, so um, I'm asking just to pray for me. Um, they come to my home every weekend, so we're going to try to do something different. So we're going to we're going to take this this at least this church, and we're going to move it. Amen. And we're going to move it, and so we're asking for prayer that we're going to go out in the community, and we're going to talk to young people, Amen. and we're going to ask the prayer line to pray for us, Amen. and we're going to pray for other churches to join us. We've been invited um, to go to other churches and pray with the other young people and to sing with other young people. So be with us. Because it doesn't stop. We are the church. Just Amen. because we don't have a pastor doesn't mean that we can't stop ministering. So um, the invitation came out today that we're going to go out with or without your blessing uh, because God is our father. He's our father. He said, go. We go. With or without your, he's our, as he said today, he's our authority. And so we're going by God's authority. So it's, it's not about denomination. Forget that. It's about God saying so he has people in other folks. Yes. Yes. 
he got people at other polls. And so we're going out there and reach those other people at other polls. They says, can you come? We have young people that we want to pray, that wants to pray. They want us to join them, we're going to join them. Okay? They're, they're seeking. Young people want to commit suicide. They want, to, they want somebody to talk to them. Let's do it. Let's do that. But we need to do it with God's blessing. We need to do it under God's authority, as he says. So we're asking for your prayers. We're asking that you just unite with us. And, that, and, and the other thing, too, is that as you see our T-shirts, um, this is something that we're going to start doing. We're going to have T-shirts that not only help the praise team and, uh, and the audio team, but this is something that our young people is going to start doing. We're going to try to do it at least monthly, whatever, but we're going to be selling these T-shirts, but it's not just for a fundraiser, but it's a message. Yes. It's a message, as you see behind our church, that we are, and it, we, our message on our church, it says we are uh, under God's, we're under God. Yes. So, and so a lot of people have been stopping us, and it's like, what? You know, so we're influenced by God. This church is influenced by God. Our Holy Spirit is in us, and we're not going to stop. We're not going to stop. We're going to let the Holy Spirit guide us. And I'm excited about it. And so I'm not going to do a sermon like my big brother did. Uh, we got things we want to do. We're going to go out and we're going to commune with God right now. So as we close, could you please stand and we're going to have a word of prayer. Um, I'm going to ask Levon to come and join us up here. Join me up here, my big sister. Well, actually, I'm older than she is, but still. Yeah, I'm your little sister. Little sister. I didn't want to say that. <laughs> but um, anyway, go ahead and rub that in. Um, but we've been, been reunited for, for years, and she's been um, encouraging. And he told us to get in the middle. Yeah, 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 yeah. So um, I just want to say thank you so much for being there for me. Oh, she's yeah, so and then even though sometimes she gets on my nerves, but, uh, but it's in love. Last, last. <laughs> but I love her to death. I love her to death. Um, so, but we're going to pray together. Okay. We're going to pray together and we're going to ask God for his authority. Amen. Okay, so you can start and I close it out. Okay. Like we do on the prayer line. Okay. All right. Let's bow our hands, please. Oh, gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we come humbly yet boldly to thy throne of grace one more time, Father God. We thank you on the Sabbath. We thank you for the blessings of your presence this weekend, Lord, this Sabbath, Lord. You blessed us richly. We just thank you for who you are. You are our God, Lord. You are our Savior. You are our Father, and you are our friend. Lord, you are not just for us. Um, you are with us. And, Lord, we have to believe your promises. We have to believe you are who you said you are. So we're asking, Father God, for your Holy Spirit to cleanse us from unrighteousness, to fill us with thy spirit, and align our will yes, with your will, Lord, yes. that we may respect and be obedient and be committed to your authority, that we will go where you say go, Father God, that we will let go what you say let go, Father yes. God, that we will be willing to serve Trusting you, Lord, and not afraid of the consequences, Lord. Yes. There Amen. are times, Amen. Lord Jesus, when we have to speak up to those things that are not right. We have to be mm. courageous. Yes. You yes. have to have courage, Lord, to serve yes. you. Yes. Yes. So, Lord, we pray for your spirit to increase, that we, we may decrease, Father God, that we will reflect more of your nature, your character, that our thoughts would be your thoughts, Father God. That our what comes out of our mouth, Father, would be mm -hmm. yes, Lord. your words. Yes, Jesus. That people will see you when they see us. Mm -hmm. So remove all the junk, Father God. Take away the, the idols, Father God. Take away the distractions, Lord. Yes, Lord. Take away the doubts and the fears. Yes, Lord. Help our unbelief, Father God. Help us to trust you fully, to trust you honestly. Lord, to know that we can be open, we can be honest, we can come. You're a big enough God, Lord, yes. yeah. to come and tell you all of our concerns, Father yes. God. Yes, Lord. You ask us to make our petitions known, Lord, that if we would reveal who and, and who we are, Lord, not that you don't know, but you want a conversation with us. 
So help us, Lord, to come in full transparency to you so that you may change us and transform us, Lord, that we, we may reflect your women and men of God on this earth, Lord, that others will look and say, I want what they have. Yes. Yes. I want to know because yes, they look different. Hmm. They act different. Help us to have your love so we may embrace the people, Lord, that will come through these doors. Mm -hmm. May they come with their sagging, with their tattoos, whatever which way they need to come Amen. to you, Father Amen. God. Let Amen. us Amen. embrace them. Amen. 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 And love on them, Lord. There are so many people who just feel unloved. So let us love them, Lord, enough so they can look up and recognize that you love them too. Yes. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Almighty oh, Father, we come again. Here we are, Lord, your daughters, coming before your throne, Lord Jesus. Have mercy on us. Lord, give us a clean heart from Amen. the inside, Lord Jesus. We come before your throne, Lord, just not worthy. We're not worthy, Lord Jesus, but yet you died. Mm -hmm. You died for us, Lord, so we can come to you to say thank you. Thank you, thank you for everything you've yes, done Lord. for us, Lord. Yes, Lord. We just want to give you the praise. Just want to give you the praise and the glory and the honor that you deserve for just being you. Yes. Just being you in our lives, Lord. We come to you for all kinds of mess, but you are so patient. You're so kind. Yes. So understanding, yes. God, you're wonderful. So all we got on our lips, at least I got on my lips to say thank you. Thank, thank you, Jesus. Jesus. There's times where there's just not words, just moaning and crying and yes. just thank say, Lord, thank you. Thank you. You are so worthy. Thank you. So Lord, we thank you for our trials and tribulations because we know that it's going to build up character, Lord. Yeah. Yeah. We know that you are preparing us for a better place. And I can't wait to ask questions to my guardian angel. How many times that you had to interfere to keep that car from us? From, from keeping us from danger, from the time that Satan wanted to kill us while we were sleeping. How many times, guardian angel, that you had to interfere? Amen. I have so many questions I want to ask my guardian angel that he had to protect me. Yes. How many times that when we put somebody on the throne that we had to pray for, Lord, the people that hate us. Mm -hmm. Lord, we had to pray for our enemies that you send out those angels anyway because we prayed for them anyhow, Lord. We said, Lord, we know mm -hmm. they hate us, but please, Lord, protect them. Amen. Please be with the drug dealers, Lord. Please be yes. with that guy that killed that child. Yes, we we prayed yes. for them anyhow. Be with the parents of that child, Lord. Yes. We pray for them anyhow, but Lord, yet they had to go to prison. We still pray for them. Amen. But yet, Lord, they still surrender their lives to you because we pray for them anyway. Because you died for them too. You don't, you don't like the sin, but you still love the person. Amen. Amen. And we had to remember that in our prayer line, Lord, that we learned that you died for all of us. You hate the sin, but you love the person. Amen. And we have, we have learned so much, Lord. I have learned so much. Don't hate the person, but hate the attitude. So, Lord, we're asking that as we love our young people, don't hate the child. Mm -hmm. Hate the attitude. And love them. Yeah. Pray for them. Yeah. And let them know, how can we help? What do you need? Because sometimes the behavior is something that they're hurting inside and cannot express it because they don't know how. So, Lord, please help us to get to know one another. Sometimes we say things, but it's not really meaning it because we're hurting inside and don't know how to tell someone that we're hurting. So, Lord, help us to learn to forgive. Help us to not to bring it back up. People be bringing 20, 30, 50 years of stuff back up. Amen. Help us to throw it in the deepest sea like you've done. Amen. Help us to learn to forgive ourselves. Yeah. Yes, Lord. Lord, when we bring stuff to the throne and ask you to forgive us, Lord, help us to not to bring it back up because yeah. Satan does it. Right. 
mercy. Amen. He let us think that we are not worthy to come before you. He make us think that we can't make it to the kingdom. Remember what you did a long time ago. Remember what you did yesterday. And he make us think that we're not worthy. But then you sit there and you have us open up the word yes. and says, my grace is sufficient. Yes. Yes. Amen. Yes. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for the blood. Yes. Thank you so much for dying on the cross. Yes. And thank you for the Sabbath day that we can come before you right now and rejoice and say thank you. Yes. And we can praise you and give you the glory. Thank you for all the ones that are here. Thank you for the one that's on the line. And those who are on the line, I hope that in your heart that you know that Jesus is real. Yes. Jesus is love. Yes. And please let him in your heart. Amen. Because he is waiting, just waiting for you to come. We run away from him. He's never gone anywhere. He is right here and now. In Jesus' precious name, amen. 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 You're dismissed. Till till next time. <laughs>